before you do any electrical work, always make sure you disconnect your negative 10 millimeter wrench. Loosen up the nut and just spin it off. Remove the engine cover, 10 millimeter socket. And just lift it up. To remove the air box, I'm going to start with the vent hose on the valve cover. I'm going to squeeze this clamp with my fingers. Get that off. Then I'm going to take the harness off. This is the mass airflow sensor. Squeeze down this tab and pull. Then we have the purge vent. That's for the EVAP system. Squeeze on the tab and push. Now I've got a pair of needle nose pliers so that I can undo these clips. Squeeze the tab, lift that up. Take the harness out of the air box. Now I'm going to take the air duct hose off the throttle body. I'm going to remove the little vacuum hose here. There's a clamp. You can squeeze it with your fingers and slide the clamp off the hose. And spin the hose, pull it off. This is an eight millimeter socket. I'm gonna loosen that clamp up. Now I'm gonna go to the air box to see these clamps. Pop these clamps off. And pull the lid off. And take the hose right off the throttle button. And with that out of the way, I can now see the wire harness, squeeze the two ears on that, pop that through. There should be one more hose. So here's the other EVAP hose. One last clamp, little squeeze tabs. That through. Now we can put this safely aside. So next step, take the air filter out. You get three mounting bolts, 10 millimeter socket. Take the bolts out. There's one harness on the side to dismount it. It's easier once you tilt it up out of the way. Break that free like that. And I'm just gonna spin the housing around and expose that mounting clip. Take my needle nose pliers and squeeze the tabs. Pop that through. Now I can get the box out of the way. 10 millimeter wrench and now we're going to disconnect the positive side. We have a cable connector here and here on the bracket. So we're going to get the needle nose and squeeze the tabs and pull that off also. And we have to lift up the plastic shield in the front here just to get access to that battery mounting tray. So I'm going to push the tab in on all of them and then they'll just pop right out. Now we can just pop each piece out. There's the bracket right there. 10 millimeter wrench or socket should work. Now I can get the battery hole down out of the way. Leave that hook out. Now you can lift the battery up. Lift the plastic tray up out of the way. So 12 millimeter socket, I'm going to disconnect these two bolts and then two down on the, on the frame rail. Okay, get the bolts out. On this style, you can actually pop that out a little bit, hold it, put the flat blade screwdriver in that slot, pop it free. And then let's see if we can access this just as easy. Same on this clip. Now we get that out of the way. Two more bolts for this battery tray and then we'll have a clean shot. The 
needs a 12 millimeter socket still. So we're going to disconnect the electrical connectors to the starter first. You have the solenoid wire right here. Is it like a tab? I'm just going to put a little pocket screwdriver in there. Pop that out. And this has a trap door on it. And that should be a 12 millimeter socket. I'm going to break that free. Pull the cable off. I'm going to put that not right back on. And I can take my flathead screwdriver while I'm here if I want to, just to make it easier for avoiding a lot of problems. Pull that little tab back so I can get that harness up and out of the way. You have two mounting bolts, one here and one there, opposite of each other, 14 millimeter socket. And on the back one, I'm going to use a 14 millimeter swivel. Just grab the starter firmly and give it a shake. Install the new starter, just reverse procedure. Line up the bolt holes. Make sure everything reaches and connects. Yep. I'm going to put the two bolts in, the mounting bolts. Start them by hand. Might have to wiggle the starter around. There we go. And then I'm just going to snug them up. And tighten it to factory specs. I'm going to tighten this both mounting bolts to dealer manufacturer specifications is 27 foot-pounds. Double check. Loosen up the new nut. Take it off and grab your positive battery cable and reattach it. I'm going to put that bracket back on. And then reinstall that. There's no torque specs for this, so we're just going to bottom it out and then snug it not too tight. That copper stud will break on that solenoid. So you basically want it bottomed out and a nice little eighth of a turn. Put the cover on. We're going to install the top cover first. Just going to snug them. And grab the top tray. Let's bring it back in. Let's get the bolts. This has the negative cable on it. So make sure you get that. Don't forget that negative cable because the vehicle will not start. Starting it. Same over here. Let's start these other ones. Okay, good to go. Tighten everything up. Put the harnesses back in the positions. Lock that back in. Putting the pl plastic tray back, you'll see a two tabs where it seats. There we go. Push it down. Place your battery back in the tray. I'm going to fish this right through that handle. See if I can line it up. Might have to maneuver the battery around a little bit. So this goes 
right down there in that little hook. There's a whole slot for it. Line the bolt up, push down on that, get it started. Make sure you put the harness connectors back in the spots and then I'm going to put the positive back on all the way down on that terminal and then tighten it up. These pins you basically push them to push the pin back out so butterfly it, push it out. Squeeze the tabs, line up the hole and then flush. Bottom air box compartment is going to go back in, line up that air intake. You get three mounting bolts. And before I get too carried away, I'm going to put my cable bracket back in over here. Just pop it down in place. 10 millimeter socket. Just snug them up. Install the air filter. Make sure it seats correctly. These can be kind of a little bit of cumbersome. They ride on that ridge. Okay, we're going to take the top air cover and I'm going to put the two back teeth in the spot right there. And all at the same time, I'm going to throw the air intake hose on, throttle body, push that down. I'm going to do the clips first, two clips, put this hose on. Get that clamp to go back on. Now don't forget the vent hose back here for this EVAP. And then it's just a little butterfly. You can easily use your fingers for that. And now we can get the harness and rehook it up. So we'll follow the clip that goes down there. Put that in that fold. Bring the connectors over. This connector goes right there. Connect the mass airflow sensor and the EVAP solenoid and then put this bracket back up there. Now we have the vent hose down here. Let's slide right over. Close the butterfly clamp. And mount it in the uh, bracket. Eight millimeter socket and we're gonna tighten the throttle body hose. Make sure that's tight. You don't want any air leaks. So now you can put your engine cover back on, line up. This one, the stud actually came out with the nut. That happens, it's not a big deal. Start it by hand, put the nut on this side, 10 millimeter socket, and just snug them up. Now we're done, we can put our negative battery cable back on. 10 millimeter wrench. Make sure it seats all the way down on the post. 